this may be your very first time seeing the HubSpot software, we're really just going to be focusing on one part of it today, which is the chat flow. The first thing that we're going to do uh, is call create a chat flow. So there's two options here. We do have the option to use Facebook Messenger. So if you are a company um, where you have quite a, a heavy traffic Facebook account, you get a lot of queries through that. You can also set up um, a chatbot within this environment as well. For now, we're going to just focus on website because it's the most popular use case. Um, but just know that Facebook Messenger is also an option here. So there's a few things to start off with. You can either go with your live chat. So that is your human interaction. There's going to be a person at the end of, end, end of that chat speaking live to you. Or we have our bots. Um, and with HubSpot, what we've done is that we know this might be your first time setting up a chat bot. So to help ease those concerns that I mentioned, we've set up some template bots to get you started. So say, for example, um, we have that qualified lead bot. So I know a few people had said this would be the reason that they might use a chat bot. There's actually a template here that you could start off with um, that will just give you a little bit of information, a little bit of prompts that you can use to qualify your leads but then you can customize it to your own needs as well. And we've also just given some use cases here. And I think you covered this. There's an endless amount of things that you can do with chatbots. So it's really up to you, I suppose, what's the biggest priority for, for your business. We're going to start from scratch today, just so I can show you how to build this from the start. So the first thing that you can do is just decide where you want these chat conversations to live. Um, with HubSpot, a few years ago, we had one chat function and our sales team managed that chat function. It meant that all queries went to the sales team, which didn't always make sense. Love my sales team, but if you're asking them an extremely technical question, they may not be the best people to handle that response. So what we've actually done now is that we've separated our chats to go to different inboxes, different teams, so that the right team can deal with that query. So you can choose where you want uh, your chat to live and you can create multiple versions of this as well. You can also select what language you want your chat in. So it may be that you deal with customers in different languages. We have a few common supported languages um, and you can see that automatic translation is happening there. So I don't confuse this all. I'm going to keep this in English for now. So it's going to open up your chat builder screen um, and you can see it's already started to populate a little bit and um, the first thing is going to be your welcome message. So this is what's going to be, um, you'll have a little widget here which will be your chat prompter and there's going to be a welcome message that you can put here. You can customize this to whatever you want and um, we just have an example placed here. So this will be the, the opening message for someone to open your prompter. The next thing is that you will have your first question essentially that you're going to ask this user. So you can call this whatever you want. This is just a, an internal name. But we again, we have some prompts here. So maybe in this case, it's hi there, how can I help you today? There are some other options to include some more personalization in this. So you see that we have a contact token here. So if this is a user that is known to me, maybe they exist in my database, I've interacted with them before, maybe I want to be a little bit more personal in my approach to them, and I'm actually going to call them um, by their first name. Now, we will also have anonymous visitors here, so we want to make sure that if we don't know their first name, that they're not seeing some type of strange message here. So we can enter a default value such as hi there. So what this would mean in this case, that if it was me writing into that chat, it would say, hi, Lisa, how can I help you today? If not, it would say, hi, there. So just to give you an idea of those elements of personalization, even though someone is speaking with a bot, you can make this uh, more of a conversation as well. So that's one of the options that you can do. The next thing is that you can actually start to add quick replies um, and we always recommend this because it means that you can start to take the user on a particular path depending on what their query is. So we'll keep it very simple today. I'll just pretend that um, I'm a, a veterinary service and we have um, a few options for, for customers coming to the site. So I'm going to start to type some quick replies. So maybe one of the things is I want to book an appointment with the vet. That could be one of them. And again, this will be all based on your research done and your strategy of why people are coming to your site. 
Another thing may be that they uh, have, um, I want to ask a pet health question. That might be something else that they're coming to our site with. Or it could be that I have an issue with my pet's prescription. Could be anything else. It could be that they want to buy pet food. Maybe we've pet grooming. You can add whatever options that you want here. We'll stick with the three just for the demo purposes. You'll see that there's a tick box here to disable open responses. So if I untick that, it means that someone can write a freehand response um, to that question of how can I help you today. While you know this might be be worth it in some situations, the bot will try to understand that query. If it doesn't, it will show an error message. It is generally recommended to try and have them on a particular path just to ensure that the bot's not getting confused and that we're directing them to the right place. So I would encourage you to use that quick reply function um, and disable open responses if you just want to make this uh, really clean. You'll see that you have the option um, here, it's to save to a HubSpot property. What this basically means is that we're linking whatever information this user is giving us to our customer database. So it just means that we can start to collate all of the customers that ever had pet health questions, for an example. Um, and it just means all of that information is saved into our database. So what we can do then is we've got some branches here and what branches do is means that we can bring those users on a different journey depending on what they've asked. So what we can say is that if a visitor's response is I want to book an appointment with the vet, we can decide what actually happens next. So in this case, I'm going to go to a new action. Maybe I need to ask them a few more questions um, in order to be able to book an appointment. So I'm going to click the ask a question um, button here. And I can either ask a custom question or we've also populated some frequently uh, used questions. So in this case, I'm going to need their name. So I'm going to save that um, there. I'm not going to add any quick replies because obviously I want them to be able to uh, put that in freehand. And I can also save their name uh, to my database as well. There's a tick box here to skip this action if the property already exists. That basically means that if I know who this customer is, I know their name, I, I know their details, I don't want to ask them that information um, and really just improve that customer experience. So in this case, I'm going to skip that. So we have that here that if they say I want to book an appointment, we'll see that a new question appears to get their name. Maybe I need to ask another question again to get their email address. So again, not going to have quick replies. I'm going to save that to my database and I'm going to skip. And you'll see that there's an error message here. So if someone types something that we can't recognize as the valid email address, we will populate an error message to try and uh, get them to input that again. You can customize whatever message that is here. So we've asked them for their contact name. We've asked them for their email address. Now maybe we want to ask them a custom question. So this could be something like pet name. So again, we can type whatever we want in here. What is your pet name? Not going to add quick replies, but I am going to save this to my database. So pet name is something that I've already created and I'm going to skip if it exists. Maybe I need one more question, which is what type of pet do you have? So maybe I need to know what we're dealing with here. And I'm going to put what type of pet do you have? And I'm going to start adding my quick replies, dog, cat, rabbit, bird, or you can have other, depending on, on what your vet services. Um, so again, I'm going to disable my open responses and I'm going to save this to pet type. So save that there. So I've collected all of this information. Now I want to make sure that this user can actually book their appointment. So the next action is that I'm going to get them to book a meeting. So it's called a meeting. In this case, we're doing it as an appointment. So I'm just going to call this appointment. And I already have um, my meeting associated here. I've given myself a, a doctor title for, for this demonstration. Um, so here we have that the vet appointment um, with Dr. Kelly. This is actually synced to my calendar. So it's going to bring up all of my availability, all of my available appointments. And we'll see what this looks like in the front end in a little bit. 
we're going to just change this to your appointment is booked. Um, and we can adjust that to whatever we want. So that's one journey there to actually book a, a vet appointment. So let's look at some of the um, other examples that we had here. So if we wanted um, to get another one where I'll remove that journey and we'll actually uh, manage if and then branches. So if it is the example where um, they have a question about their pet health, we might want to direct them to a place on our website that answers some of these questions. So in this case, we're going to go to a new action and we're going to do this knowledge base lookup. So what this means is that it's going to look for our uh, website to try and understand is there any keywords based on what this user is looking for does it match any um, articles that we have on our website so you can either do two things here you can display a specific article so maybe it's a case that your question is very specific so that you can display an article that relates to it or we have this search functionality so there's a prompt here of what you need help with I'd always recommend giving users some tips. So it says try using keywords like pricing or hours. In this case, we might say try using uh, keywords like dental health or arthritis as an example. There's also a no results message. So if someone does use a keyword that's not triggering anything, um, it will let that, that user know and you can again adjust that to what you want. So in this example, um, we have that there's a knowledge base lookup, but what happens if um, you know, that isn't enough for them? We wanna be able to ask them another question for, um, you know, did this help your query? And this could be a yes or a no answer. So again, we'll go to our branches because we want to make sure that if their answer is yes, maybe we want to just do a simple message to say thanks. But if they have answered no in this example, we want to make sure that they're still getting help. So in this case, we might want to send them to a team member. So I'm going to just say send to team member here. We can assign this to someone particularly on our team. So if you've got someone that manages chat, you can say that um, in this case, let's assign to myself. And what uh, I can do is I can set myself as available or unavailable. So if I'm available, the system will pick that up and it will show thanks. I've connected you to one of our specialists. And this is exactly what you was talking about where you can actually get the bot to hand off to a live person. So if there's any point in, in your conversation, in that bot conversation where you think it's actually better for, for a real person to interact here, you can change that over. And again, if the team member is away, um, we can say, thank you. There's no specialists online, but they'll come back to you. If you are doing this, it's obviously really important to collect their email address up front um, because it means then that you can actually refer back to their query. Um, so there's a few options that, that you can do here. And then let's go back to um, that third option. So it was, um, I have an issue with my pet's subscription or prescription. So we want to decide what happens um, if it's this one. So again, maybe we need to ask some more questions. So this might be things like their email address. So again, we've got all of that set up from the previous time. So that's fine. So we have, I have an issue with my pet subscription. There's an email. But then maybe what we need to do is actually create a ticket because maybe whoever manages prescriptions, it could be a separate company, it could be something that we need to look into a little bit more. So what we can do is submit a ticket. You can call the ticket name whatever you want. You can decide what ticket pipeline it goes into depending on the category. 
And you can also prompt a visitor for a ticket description. So just asking them for a little bit more detail um, about the problem that they're having. Um, and again, you can ask some further information here. And you can also set a ticket priority. So maybe the tickets coming in from chat are, are a low priority or they could be a high priority. And again, we just wanna make sure that um, we let them know what's happening. You can completely use your own business tone and anything um, that you, I suppose, choose to interact with on your website. Um, you can completely customize how you want your, your bot to interact. So what we can do at any time through creating this, um, you'll see that there's this preview option. So this is all still being built in draft mode until we toggle this on. It's not publishing it to your site, but you will be able to preview what this looks like if someone was interacting with you straight away. So in this example, um, if it was a case that someone wanted to book an appointment, we would be able to see, um, I'll just adjust this so that we have this coming up. So you can see straight away that we have those answers here. I want to book an appointment. Um, and then it will basically go through exactly what you have on back end, where if you want to book an appointment, what's your name, email address. And if you take out any of these options, it's going to um, basically show you what the difference would be if you were to remove any of those options. You have the option to target as well. So what you can choose is if you want um, your chatbot to appear across your entire website, maybe you only want it to appear on certain pages, or you can also add exclusions. So maybe it's a case that um, you don't want it to appear on a particular web page, you can decide that. Um, so maybe uh, on your pricing page, you want to make sure that people are actually calling in rather than interacting on chat, or maybe you only want it appearing on your pricing page, you could do that too. You can also do it um, based on visitor information and behavior. So you can actually only show your chat to a particular group of contacts or users. So maybe you only want your chat to show to your leads or your customers, you can do that. Um, or you can also just show it to people who actually aren't a contact and you want to maybe gain their information. You can say that you want um, only visitors who are not known to be able to see your chat. You can do things like session count. So where the session count is greater than one, two, three, you can decide that then it's when you want your, your chat to appear. And I think this is exactly what he was saying is that maybe you know, you've know you tried to convert them with a call to action. Maybe you've done an appealing offer and it hasn't really worked out. You can see as chat maybe the method to connect with this customer. You can also choose your chat avatar. So say in this example, um, I wanted to change it to a dog, fits my business. I can change that and you can see what it looks like straight away. Also, I can change the name of what I want to call this. So maybe it's the vet bot or maybe it's just Lisa. I can decide whether I wanna give my chat um, an alias essentially. You can just see what happens to based on the display behavior. Maybe you want this different based on if it's desktop or if it's mobile. So on desktop, we maybe wanna pop open the welcome message that it's there the whole time. While maybe on mobile, we only wanna show the chat launcher because obviously you've got less space on the screen. You don't want to you know, obstruct the user experience as well. You can completely um, determine what happens here. There's also triggers. So maybe you want to only show this where um, we think that a customer or a user is about to leave your web page, then you want the chat to show. You can also choose based on um, their time on the page. So we generally recommend more than five seconds. And just the reason being is page speed. If you've got a lot of items loading on a page when a user first opens it, it can slow the page down a little bit. So we do typically recommend just leaving five seconds, um, but you can determine that here. Or maybe it's a case that um, you want them to get to a certain 
point on your, your article, a certain point on a page that you're showing before you show them the chat, you can determine that percentage there too. And then you'll have your options here. So you can uh, have a delay between messages so that it does seem a little bit more like that conversation. You can also choose when you want the session to time out. So if that user has left for whatever reason um, and goes back to the chat, you want to um, be able to determine how long you want that to be active. You can also have a generic error message. So it can be things like um, we're experiencing technical difficulties, but just know that errors can happen. Um, so making sure that you have um, a, an error message in place language we spoke about, and then availability as well. So um, this is where you can determine when you want this chat to show. So you could have it that it's showing all the time. Um, so that might mean that when you go home for the day, the bot's still doing its work, or you can have it to show only during business hours. Or again, you can determine, you know, what those business hours are as well. So um, completely up to you, but you still obviously have controls in the back end that if the bot is trying to send to a user that is not there or unavailable, it will show up. There's also some data privacy and consent. So there is um, some cookies that are needed. Uh, say, for example, if um, the, the user leaves that page that they've been chatting on and then they go back, it will reset itself unless um, they've, they've accepted cookies. So there is some information um, that you would need there. But that is kind of a, a demo in itself. You'll have seen, you know, chats, you've probably interacted a lot with them yourselves online. Um, but I think it's just good to kind of see how it works in the back end as well. So hopefully um, you found that helpful um, and any questions, happy to take them.